I wanted to ask your views on what does this whole crisis mean for the future of the European Union? And I know, obviously, that's a broad question, hmm. but it's something that hasn't been brought up yet, and I just sure. wanted to get your, your view. You're quite right to ask it. I, 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 if I haven't answered it, it's because I have, much like I would appreciate any American who has Trump en nuit, uh, uh, I, have, um, I have Brexit tiredness. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to go to a dinner party, coffee shop, pub, anything else without the conversation being about Brexit, and I refuse to engage in it any more than is absolutely necessary. I think, by the way, to speak to the, the central issue I was talking about tonight, um, I, I'm fairly sure that Brexit wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for Angela Merkel. I think Angela Merkel caused Brexit. I think a lot of people, myself included, who I voted for uh, Brexit, um, felt that if the European Union could be led so single-handedly so unilaterally, so without care for asking your allies among the other member states, just rampaging over your allies' concerns, that if you could behave this irrationally, then it was not worth being a part of. And I'm fairly sure that, that as I said, Angela Merkel's actions propelled that. Um, now, the situation we're in is that we are... Um, there was a terrific gif online of a man who's drunk on the London Underground jumping off the elevator, jumping off the escalator to slide down, but then hitting between his legs a sign and like flying off the other one, which is going up and then falling down and splatting on the floor. And it was sent around with hashtag Brexit. Um, because we have had a terrible, uh, terrible 15 months or whatever of shooting ourselves in, a, in every foot we can find. Um, and um, so it's a very strange period. And, and again, I mean, I wouldn't like to hesitate to guess where it's going to go. I would just say that there are very odd, uh, I mentioned being in Hungary again recently, there are very odd things. Uh, uh, the Hungarian public are very pro-EU, about 75% pro-EU. Only about 20-25% of the Hungarian public would vote to leave the EU. But they are 75% opposed to the EU's migration policies. So there's a set of situations like that where you see two things that are going to keep bashing against each other. And you think, which will, which will win in that? And I don't know. I mean, it could be they continue to think, well, our free movement and our economic gain for the time being from the EU is worth this constant bullying from Brussels. But, um, I mean, it's very, I, I, from an American point of view, a lot of what happens in the EU is hard to follow because it, it's, I mean, my own belief was that it was a relationship that Britain never wanted to be in. And uh, we are in the situation of a divorced couple where we are going to have a nasty period of working out who owns which CDs. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, we might go off with some that don't belong to us. But in the end, will be on the open market again. Um, I've been travelling a lot in recent years across our continent, uh, from the reception islands in the south of Europe and Italy and Greece, where migrants are coming in, still coming in, roughly 6,000 in an average 24 hours to one island. Um, and I've been following that story up. A lot of people don't bother following the story up, but following it to suburbs of German and French cities and bits of Scandinavia and seeing what actually happens. And I think it's a catastrophe. And I think it is vastly understated by our entire political class. And in this country, you know, we have a sort of strange debate about this. People say, you know, we don't talk about immigration enough. That's not quite true. What we don't do is talk seriously enough about it. We occasionally in this country have a big flare-up about, for instance, the Calais camp, understandably. And every time that happens, various people say, why don't we let in the people in Calais? Ordinarily, uh, there's about 6,000 people in Calais. 6,000 people, as I say, come in roughly every 24 hours to one island. And so we fantastically underestimate the scale of this challenge. People uh, 
on the right. Sometimes think it's incredibly easy to stop. You know, you could simply stop the boats coming or, or something like that. And uh, that's a mistake. People don't realize the huge complexity of that. And people, broadly speaking, on the left have this fantastical mistake of thinking, oh, once they're in, they'll become Europeans. And what's the truth? The truth is that that's very unlikely. It's very unlikely that when you import people into a continent from so many different places around the world, that you aren't, first of all, just going to import the world's problems as well as the world's people. And secondly, uh, that they will become sort of liberal-minded uh, Europeans. I give a lot of evidence in the book from polling, observations, statistics, to show that there might be a quite different future in this, that instead of, as it were, Europeanizing the world, that Europe becomes more like the third world. Can I put you, do you have a problem then with tolerance? Um, I think that we as a society have a problem with this. But what's I, the alternative then? Well, we're not going to be tolerant. No, just, what, it's, we're going to be intolerant. I think that tolerance has borders, like everything else should. Um, that there are people who are intolerant who you should not tolerate. Let me give you a very quick example, if I may. I'm Please. gay. Right. And uh, it's not a very big thing in my politics or in my, my views. But uh, I was very struck uh, a year or so ago, and YouGov did a poll of attitudes towards homosexuality across the country. You would think this would sort of smoke out some homophobes in Yorkshire and, you know, the Dales and Wales. And no, no, no. Most of the country, about 14% of people said they had a problem with homosexuality. In London, that was double. Ah, I think now, I know where we're going. Go why on. would that be? Yeah, go Might it be? that when, as I say, you import people from across the world, they don't all have the sort of Dutch and British views of, for instance, sexual difference, or gender difference, or even religious difference. What are the religious murders we've had in Britain in recent years? The most striking thing is Muslim on Muslim murders. An Ahmadiyya shopkeeper in Glasgow murdered because of his faith by another Muslim. Who drove halfway up the country to do Who it. Who drove halfway up the country to do it. So I'm not but saying it's all bad by any means. What I'm saying is that I think we should be looking at this much more seriously and considering that, the, this is the overriding thing, considering that it may not work. We are trying to do something historically fantastic. But what's the alternative? The alternative... Literally razor wire fences. No, the, the, the first thing is the thing that publics across Europe are all begging their governments to do. Just slow it down. How can you? If there's 6,000 people coming across the med every day, what are you going to do, watch them drown? I, I, don't, I know you don't I, literally no, wouldn't let them no, drown. I, I, um, sort of I, I, I have a chapter in the book explaining the things that we should have done from the beginning of the recent part of the crisis, which is quite straightforward. You stop people getting into Europe to begin with, because once people are in Europe, they stay. They always stay. I mean, it, it's a myth that, that anyone really gets returned. Tiny numbers of people get returned. So once you go Why in... You go back? One, exactly. And once you, once you, as it were, break into Europe, you're rewarded for having done so. You become a, 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 a European. You're part of Europe. Um, so I think one of the first things is you, you've got to stop that flow. And I have a whole chapter on the things you could do. Leasing land from North African countries, making sure that the processing... Of yes, you talk about you, stopping you, it at you, source. Exactly. I read that bit, which is what Mr Cameron, of course, talked about when he was Prime Minister. Yes talked about being the important part yeah, of that. Yeah. Um, but, but the other thing is that we have, we have a misunderstanding about this whole crisis, if I say so. We, whenever you speak to somebody who says, for instance, why don't we let them in, they are under the misapprehension that most of these people are, for instance, fleeing the Syrian civil war. Now, the Syrian civil war is a terrible war. It's beyond our control to stop it. And it is undoubtedly a humanitarian crisis. But most of the people coming into Europe are not coming from Syria. They are, as I've observed myself, coming from sub-Saharan Africa, from the Far East, from across the Middle East. Uh, when people say, well, if we solve the Syrian civil war, what's your plan for Eritrea or Nigeria or, or, or Chad or any of the other places that people are coming from? Nobody can answer that. And so the, the, the key thing is that we're not doing the world a favour by implying that they can come in. But there is a school of thought that one of the ways to defeat ISIS, and there is an argument that ISIS is anyways being pushed back, is that they had this, this culture of hatred, that mm. Europe hates you. And the fact that actually Europe doesn't hate you, Europe is quite welcoming, particularly if you look at Angela Merkel and her policy, that that was a way to defeat the ISIS ideology. I've, I've read that. Now, you, you might totally disagree, with it, but I put that to you at least as another way of seeing what Merkel was trying to achieve. If that was what she was trying to achieve, then she'd have to take the bad with good, wouldn't she? And accept then on her conscience the people mown down by a truck in Berlin before the Christmas market before Christmas. 
she'd have to take onto her own conscience the uh, first suicide bombing in Germany in 2016 outside a wine, a wine bar in Ansbach. She'd have to take on her own conscience the ISIS axeman on a train who ended up brutally um, um, hacking at a family actually of Chinese tourists in Bavaria. She'd have to take all these things on board and then she should turn around to the German people and say, you know, I'm playing a very long game and you're just going to have to put up with a lot of suicide terrorism and a lot of bad things in the meantime, but you know, it'll turn out all right in the end. And as I say, again, maybe she's right, but if she's wrong, and I think she's wrong, then she is screwing up an entire continent. So you talk immigration, identity and Islam. I mean, the Islam part is not necessarily fair then for those who are all coming from sub-Sahara Africa. Isn't that Absolutely. right? It's just an inflammatory word to put on the cover of your book, Douglas, because you no. know it's going to attract attention. No, not at all. Um, I put it there because I think it's the hardest bit of this issue. Um, uh, Europe and our, and our country, I, I mean Europe as a whole, as a mm. culture, it is, um, has boundaries and has borders and, and has, a, has a past. Now, one of the things about that is we are able to integrate people. Is my, my view is we can integrate people into that culture as long as it happens slowly and as long as the change is not too radical. Now, I think that one of the hardest bits of this is not actually your... It's not easy for a Nigerian Christian to move to, to, to the UK. It is, I would argue, harder for somebody of an Islamic background to integrate into Britain. And this, I mean, I think this is perfectly obvious. It, 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 it's, it's so blindingly obvious that people never say it. But the bigger the difference of leap of culture, the more problems it seems to me you're likely to have. And the larger the numbers, the more long-term that problem is. So this isn't about beating up on Islam or Muslims or anything like it. It's saying we are going to have a serious problem of digestion.